Since the unfortunate passing of Yorkshire-born actor and writer Rodney Buse, the entertainment world has been abuzz with speculation surrounding the infamously long silence between him and James Bolam, the iconic co-stars of The Likely Lads. Facts First UK presents James Bolam Denies the Rumors After Rodney Buse's Death. Fiction reflects reality, but not always. The passing of Rodney Buse in November 2017 shined a media spotlight on an intriguing, albeit rather alarming, fact. He and his co-star James Bolam, both well-known from Likely Lads and whatever happened to the Likely Lads, hadn't exchanged words for almost four decades. While that sad reality might come as a surprise to some longtime fans of the show, especially those who didn't keep up with its star's personal lives, it's worth noting that such long-lasting animosity between stars of a popular sitcom is not a rarity. The fact of the matter is those who seem to lay the foundation of a production on screen often seem to be the ones working the hardest to dismantle it behind the scenes. When the cameras aren't rolling, often the whimsy and camaraderie we're accustomed to seeing on our TV sets dissipates as quickly as a balloon punctured with a needle. The relationship between Buse and Bolam illustrates this point perfectly, and contrary to their claims, it was a much more complex situation than either actor had publicly acknowledged. Stepping on Toes Buse once recounted a moment when Bolam's partner, actor Susan Jameson, revealed her pregnancy to him in a humorous manner that nearly caused a car accident. Buse saw this as a rather amusing anecdote and even claimed Bolam had laughed at it. But when he realized that his intensely private co-star might take offense, he immediately called to apologize. According to Buse, Bolam responded by hanging up, never to speak to him again. Bolam, however, didn't confirm Buse's account. Upon Buse's death, he finally responded, stating that there had been no such fallout. In his words, they worked happily together and when it was over, they simply moved on. This is fairly typical in the acting world. After all, you can't maintain close contact with everyone you've worked with. The truth, as is frequently the case, is somewhere in between their divergent accounts. The tension between them dates back to their early days working together on The Likely Lads. While their on-screen characters, Terry Collier and Bob Ferris, shared an emotional connection, the two actors were two markedly different people, with very little common ground to work with. Both hailed from similar backgrounds, but their personalities and attitudes were in stark contrast. Bolam was often described as reserved, maintaining a strict boundary between his acting life and his private life. Buse, on the other hand, was uproariously loud, irreverent, sociable, and often embellished his anecdotes. A good example of their differences can be found in their interactions with iconic music stars. Bolam once shared a flat with singer Mark Felt, who later became Mark Bolan, but of note is the fact that he never discussed this fact publicly. Buse, however, turned a brief encounter with Jimi Hendrix into an exaggerated tale that he often recounted, especially after knocking back a couple dry martinis. Despite their many differences, the two stars worked well together during their early days on The Likely Lads. They respected the characters they played and the scripts they were given, recognizing that they needed to inspire each other to create the magic on screen that kept the ratings high and the network brass satiated. For a time, they even socialized together after recordings, maintaining a professional relationship strengthened by their obvious on-screen chemistry. But tensions eventually arose, particularly from Bolam's side. Uncomfortable with being associated with a single role for too long and growing weary of Buse's overbearing nature, Bolam eventually moved on after the final series aired. While Bolam left feeling quite satisfied with what he had accomplished, Buse left with strong regrets, longing for more. Reunited, but it didn't feel so good. Seven years after The Likely Lads ended, a combination of factors brought the duo back together for a sequel series. Public affection for the show, a belief there was more to explore, and a targeted demographic all played a part in the revival. But the extended break between series had only deepened Bolam and Buse's mounting differences. During the hiatus, Bolam had immersed himself in a variety of roles and experiences, while Buse's career trajectory was less varied and, dare we say, quite drab. 
And while he probably wouldn't have admitted it, Buse likely felt some jealousy for his old pal's continued success. It became increasingly evident that their prolonged time apart had not mended their relationship, but rather magnified their contrasting personalities and career choices. While they continued to ignite the screen with talent, wit, and chemistry, behind the scenes the gap remained. Settling in and drifting apart As Bolam and Buse transitioned into their late 30s, it wasn't unexpected changes but a maturity that marked their aging. Bolam became more comfortable in his own skin and protective of his privacy, an individual who took his craft seriously. His colleagues admired him and he approached his work with a sense of gravity that earned him a great deal of respect. Buse, on the other hand, embraced the glamorous side of showbiz, living a lifestyle filled with luxury cars and celebrity encounters. His flamboyant persona made him the life and soul of the team, but it also earned him a divisive reputation. Behind the scenes of the much-loved sitcom, the tension between the two stars continued to simmer. Buse's name-dropping and over-familiar routines were wearing thin for some, while Bolam's more reserved approach led to many misunderstandings and strain. Their contrasting personalities produced an environment rife with discomfort for all parties. Bolam's method of coping was to focus on the work and block out distractions, maintaining a sense of professionalism admired by many. Buse, on the other hand, reportedly remained totally oblivious to the strain he caused, continuing to play the role of the ebullient entertainer. The cracks in their relationship were not enough to prevent a reunion, as the actors' love for their roles and the quality of the scripts brought them back together. However, the old tensions soon resurfaced, casting a shadow over their collaboration. Media meddling made matters worse. The situation was further complicated by the media's portrayal of their relationship, with allegations and accusations that fanned the flames of conflict. The narrative spun around them, printed on the pages of tabloids, and discussed at great length by the talking heads on the telly, only added to the tension. Despite the strained relationship, the magic on the screen remained. In retrospect, the story of Bolam and Buse is a lesson on how two very different individuals can create something special together despite their differences. Their work together may have been tinged with tension, but it also produced memorable entertainment that continues to resonate with audiences all these years later. Bolin's Enduring Success James Bolin's career didn't slow down after The Likely Lads, and his falling out, or whatever you'd like to call it, with his co-star didn't hold him back. On television, he showcased his acting prowess in roles such as serial killer Harold Shipman in ITV's Shipman and Father Leonard Tibbings in Dalziel and Pasco. He portrayed the former Prime Minister Harold Wilson in the BBC documentary The Plot Against Harold Wilson in 2006 and played Ken Lewis, CEO of Bank of America, in the dramatization The Last Days of Lehman Brothers in 2009. In more recent years, Bolam has continued to thrive in the acting world. He competed in Get Your Act Together in 2015 and joined the cast of Cold Feet as Harry Matthews in 2016. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you a fan of Bolam and Buse? Let us know in the comments section below.